Good evening, everybody. I'm Rebecca Fies, Director of Administration at MTR Los Angeles. And I'm so pleased to welcome all of you tonight to our seventh night of Paley Festo 7. It's also our 24th anniversary for the William S. Paley Television Festival. This is my first chance to host a festival here at the DGA, and I want to thank all of our longtime Paley fans, as well as our first year attendees tonight. And we celebrate FX's acclaimed Nip Tuck. Uh, before we begin, I hope you'll take a moment to visit our website at mtr.org and so that you can learn more about our events. Um, this year we also have a really great uh, Paley photo, uh, photo album on the site, as well as um, you can leave your posts on our Paley Fest blog. And we have also included a yellow survey in your brochures that we'd really uh, hope that you'll take the time to fill out and tell us how you feel about the festival. You can drop those off with any usher as you're exiting the theater tonight. As many of you know, the festival is named after William S. Paley, the pioneering broadcaster who not only founded CBS, but was the visionary force behind the creation of MTR. Bill Paley's creative genius continues to inform media, and especially MTR, to this day. I'm pleased to welcome his son here tonight, president of the William S. Paley Foundation and a valued trustee of MTNR, ladies and gentlemen, William C. Paley. Thank you. Welcome to Paley Fest. Um, I really appreciate you all coming and supporting the museum, which is a great organization and a really interesting place to visit if you want to visit there. I come out here from the East Coast every year just because I love watching these shows in a large auditorium like this with lots of other people, and I hope you enjoy it as well. Uh, it's a really good experience, and especially the chance to have a dialogue with some of the people I've seen up on the little screen. So <clears throat> thank you for supporting the museum, and thank you for coming, and I hope you enjoy tonight. Thank you. Great to have him here every night so far. To get tonight's event started, I'd like to welcome our moderator. Stuart Levine is a senior editor at Daily Variety and has been covering the television and film industry at the paper for 10 years. He can also be heard offering commentary on NPR. Please join me in welcoming Stuart Levine. So tell me. What don't you like about yourself? <laughs> it's this multi-layered question from plastic surgeons Sean Mac McNamara and Christian Troy that acts as a conduit for viewers to peek into the evocative world of Nip Tuck, where sleeping with their patients seems to be part of the doctor's job description. <laughs> the series, which began in 2003 and recently ended its fourth season, has been one of television's biggest success stories. It's the most watched scripted show on basic cable of all time and has been number one in the 18 to 49 demo in basic cable for its, all four of its years on the air. FX has already given the show a 22 episode order for their fifth season, a very rare commodity in cable, <laughs> and in cable where most shows only run 13 episodes per season. Nip Tuck has twice been nominated at the Golden Globes and won for Best Drama Series in 2005. And show creator Ryan Murphy, who recently signed an extension to continue with the show for season five, was nominated for an Emmy in 2004 for directing the pilot episode. The museum is delighted to welcome the creative team behind one of the most uh, provocative, innovative, and I would add, guilty pleasures in all of television. <laughs> Please welcome the cast and creative team of Nip Tuck. Before we begin the introductions, I just want to let everybody know that Jolie Richardson couldn't be here tonight. She's in London, but she sends her best. Uh, Kelly Carlson plays blonde bombshell Kimber Henry. Kelly's television work includes roles in CSI and Everwood. Please welcome Kelly Carlson. Sure. 
Roma Mafia plays long-suffering anesthesiologist Liz Cruz. Rome, Roma's many film roles includes parts in I Am Sam, Kiss the Girls, and she has appeared in such television series as The Profiler and Chicago Hope. Please welcome Roma Mafia. Dylan Walsh plays conflicted plastic surgeon Sean Mac McNamara. Dylan has appeared in the feature films Blood Work, We Were Soldiers, and Nobody's Fool, and his television credits include Everwood, Presidio Med, and Brooklyn South. Please welcome Dylan Walsh. Ryan Murphy is the creator and executive producer of Nip Tuck. Ryan also writes and directs for the series. He previously created and produced with Greer Shepard and Michael M. Robin, the genre-smashing WB team comedy drama Popular. Ryan recently directed his adaptation of the best-selling memoir, Running With Scissors. Please welcome Ryan Murphy. <laughs> Julian McMahon plays hedonistic plastic surgeon Christian Troy. Familiar to Australian audiences from his television roles in The Power, The Passion, and Home and Away, Julian starred in such American TV series as Another World, Profiler, and Charmed. He has appeared in feature films including Wet and Wild Summer, Chasing Sleep, and, Fant and Fantastic Four. He's co-starring with Sandra Bullock in Premonition, which comes out next week. He will be a featured player once again in the sequel Fantastic Four, Rise of the Silver Surfer, which comes out in June. Please welcome Julian McMahon. Sure. Thank you very much. Sure. <laughs> John Hensley plays troubled son Matt McNamara. John has appeared in the series The Sopranos, CSI, Witchblade, and Strangers with Candy. Please welcome John Hensley. <laughs> Michael M. Robin is executive producer of Nip Tuck as well as The Closer. Michael's career includes stints at NYPD Blue and LA Law, for which he won an Emmy. Please welcome Michael M. Robin. Good to see you. So, Ryan, I guess we'll start at the beginning. I know it's um, the series seems like it started a long time ago, but why don't you talk a little about the genesis of the show, why your interest in plastic surgery, and how it all began? Well, look, <laughs> that's right. Um, it began, uh, the, the very brief uh, story was I was a journalist in the mid-90s. I was the uh, LA bureau chief for the Miami Herald, and my job was to cover hard news, and there was none. So I was writing about the like, <laughs> Zsa Zsa Gabor trial and mm -hmm. things like that. And calf implants for men had just come out, which is like a dress shield that's made out of plastic that... Um, guys were sticking up in there and I thought it was absolutely fascinating and ridiculous and I said, can I go undercover and, to my editor and write an article about getting these implants? And he said, well that sounds fun, so do it. So I found this uh, very sweet but gullible Beverly Hills plastic surgeon <laughs> who uh, had me come in for a consult and I was going to write the article all the way up until the surgery. And in that consult, uh, he told me like 10 other things that I needed to have done to my face and body. <laughs> uh, and he used a lot of words that I actually used in the pilot, beauty is symmetry, um, that I was a moderately attractive person but that my ears were like a half a centimeter or millimeter off or something. And he basically said I should do like all these surgeries and I was so stunned <laughs> because I was in my car thinking he's right, I should do these things. <laughs> And I called my editor and I said, I can't write this story. Um, but I never forgot that, that meeting with this guy. Um, and the tell me what you don't like about yourself thing came from that meeting. So a lot of the stuff that was the genesis of the pilot came from that. And then um, Mike and Greer and I had worked on a lot of uh, episodes of Popular together. And I um, 